Thank you, Lisa. I now wish to invite Neil's second daughter, my beautiful niece and goddaughter, Nicole, to do a review of The Journey Continues. Nicole holds a bachelor's degree from the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine, with a major in sociology and a minor in psychology. She is currently the human resource team leader at Score Valves, a Scottish-owned company that services the local oil and gas industries. Here is Miss Nicole Giuseppe. Good evening, everyone. Four years ago, on August the 22nd, 2013, my dad, Neil Giuseppe, launched his autobiography, No Regrets. At that launch, he had noted that the book was not meant to be an academic dissertation aimed at enlightening the masses, but that it was simply a collection of memories of an old man who lived life to the fullest and who, in the twilight of his years, was reflecting on what those years meant to him and maybe to others whose paths he crossed along the way. He noted then, however, that he would have been happy if perchance his readers would have been able to gain any historical insights into the Arima or the Trinidad of old, or even get a better understanding of aspects of certain people's characters of which they may not have been aware. This evening, as he launches a sequel to that autobiography, which on this occasion he calls The Journey Continues, it is also quite clear that the same applies as much to this volume as it did to the former. This book captures many of his life experiences, which were missed in the former, and provides a clear insight into the life that he has lived and the things that made him tick. As an author, he has a light and interesting writing style, which is often extremely humorous, even when discussing serious subjects. He obviously learned very well from his parents, both of whom were prolific writers themselves. The book, which is 382 pages long, keeps the reader's attention throughout and is also very easy to read with its bold print and general spacing of the lines, which certainly is helpful to those whose eyes are no longer as young as they used to be. What he has also done is to include hundreds of photographs, many dating back 50 or 60 years, all of which helped to provide an historical insight into his life and experiences over the 69 years of his existence on this earth. I think it is safe to say that the reader will be convinced on completion of the volume that he or she now has a complete picture of the man whose name and face became household features to many who grew up in Trinidad and Tobago since he spent many years visiting our homes on a nightly basis as one of the nation's leading television newscasters. What I found to be very evident throughout the publication is my father's love of and commitment to family, his deep loyalty to friends, and his genuine respect for true professionals who have made their impact on society in Trinidad and Tobago, the region, and the rest of the world. What we also learn about him is that he is a very intense person with strong likes and dislikes, which he is neither afraid nor unwilling to express. That is a father that I have known for all my life. His passion for perfection comes through loudly and clearly on almost every page and provides a true insight into the man, the husband, the father, the brother, the friend, the newscaster, the cultural producer, the public relations professional, the golfer, and the world traveler. Having said that, there are many things contained in The Journey Continues that will come as a surprise to all but those who have been very close to him personally. He provides details of his recent battle with cancer and what at this time appears to be his full recovery. He talks candidly about his three-year-old marriage and the joy it has brought to his life as he enters the winter of his years. In a chapter which he appropriately calls Popery, he addresses many of the things that annoy him, prominent among them being what he sees as a deterioration in the standards in the media today, the Americanization of Trinidadians, the breakdown of discipline in schools, religious fanaticism, the failure of one of the country's major health institutions to provide an acceptable level of health care, and what he considers the ripoff that is perpetrated on the country's citizens by the large majority of insurance companies. <laughs> Readers will also be thoroughly entertained by a section he calls the Sign of the Times, in which he takes a satirical look 
at some of the signs we see throughout the country today. In the chapter entitled Memories, he records for posterity the roles he played in the country's history in a number of areas over the years. Among those roles are to that this day, uh, that to this day, he remains the only person ever to have produced the Dimash Gras show at the National Stadium, and that he was the one person committed enough to local culture to launch the first all-local music station in the country when he brought Radio Tempo 105.1 FM on the air, a mere two months after taking up the position of managing director of the Trinidad Broadcasting Company. It was a move that was hailed by all the persons in the country involved in culture who had been pleading for years for such a station. He also reveals the part he played in bringing to the nation the television coverage of the mass suicide at Jonestown in Guyana and gives us an insight into his role as a Freemason and as a manager of two of the country's leading Calypsonians. He tells us about the words spoken to him one night by a poor and apparently uneducated individual which corrected the direction in which his life had been heading, and which probably saved his career by putting him back on the right track. He also takes us back to a simpler time, almost 50 years ago, when, along with his late parents, Neville and Undine Giuseppe, he was able to tour Europe on $5 a day, a total impossibility nowadays. What has never ceased to amaze me about my father is his fantastic memory and his ability to recall even the smallest details about people and events that occurred many, many years ago. As can be expected by all who know him, he speaks quite a bit about the sport of golf, which has been a lifelong passion and which has taken him to many countries around the world over the years, including his most recent trip to Dubai earlier this year with international sporting superstars, Brian Lara and Dwight York. The statistically minded will also have a field day as he provides a host of statistics, particularly in the fields of golf, cricket and calypso, statistics which certainly provided me with information about which I was not aware. I think I can say without fear of contradiction, as I'm sure you all will, that the journey continues makes very interesting reading and is an invaluable addition to the literature of Trinidad and Tobago. I recommend it strongly. Good night.